Fear Zone, your horror channel. Good evening everyone, and today, I'm going to tell you something more than unbelievable, because I discovered on a night of terror, that werewolves can attack in packs, but luckily, I'm alive, and I can tell you about this haunted story. But before I start, subscribe to the channel and leave your like, to receive our new videos, every week. And now, let's move on to today's story, which is about Mr. Nelson, and it happened to him in the city of Paulo Afonso, which is in Brazil, and at the time it was 2002, Mr. Nelson was 24 years old. And it all started like this, I live in a simple village in my town, but at a certain time in my life, I got a job on a farm near my neighborhood, and my job there was to look after the animals, and tidy up the stables and wooden fences, and on this farm, there was a caretaker who lived in a house on the property with his family. However, I only spent the week inside the farm, I slept in a little room, but I went back to my house in my neighborhood on weekends. But one day, the caretaker of this farm told me something very strange, because he said that a few months ago, they found a man all broken up and with several dog bite marks, and that the man was lying on a dirt road near the farm, and that no one knew the man, because he was a person that no one had ever seen in the area. But to my amazement, the caretaker also said that it was certainly him who had done this to that strange guy, and the caretaker continued to tell me his story, and here comes the part that really haunted me, because the caretaker revealed that one morning, he woke up to the barking of the dogs around the farm, and he took a piece of wood in his hands and went to see what was going on. So he started walking around the farm, and that's when he saw the dogs looking for something near the fence, and when the foreman approached the dogs, something came out from behind the wooden fence jumping on the caretaker to try and catch him, but the foreman quickly saw that black figure and managed to dodge the attack in time, but even so, when he turned around to look at what it was that had attacked him, the farm dogs, which were two Rottweilers, were already surrounding the invading animal. But the caretaker saw that the animal that had entered the farm also looked like it was some kind of dog, but it was much bigger than the farm dogs. Finally, the farm dogs and the invading creature began to face each other, and after a few growls between the animals, a nasty fight broke out between the dogs and the invading creature. The three dogs rolled around on the ground, biting each other violently, and the caretaker saw that the fight between the animals was even, he took the wooden handle in his hands, and to help his dogs, he managed to land several blows on the head and back of this invading animal, and it was a really ugly fight, frightening, and with the blows with the wooden handle that he gave the creature, it was stunned, and the dogs began to beat the invading animal, and the beast, seeing that he wasn't, Going to win this fight against the caretaker and the dogs together did something surprising because this beast out of nowhere stood up as if it were a man and at that moment the foreman realized that it was a werewolf and from that position it managed to break free from the dogs that were trying to bite it. Cleverly, the creature jumped over the farm's wire fence, and then the werewolf ran with a limp across the wasteland and disappeared into the dark woods next to the property. The caretaker then hurried back to his house, grabbed his rifle, and kept watch on the property until dawn, but he was sure the creature wouldn't come back, because the werewolf had been badly wounded. The foreman told me that this werewolf looked a bit like a man and a bit like a dog too, and that it had dark spiky hair all over its body, and that it had a snout and ears almost like a dog's, but that the creature's eyes were like lights, which would astonish anyone. After the caretaker told me this story, he warned me that this creature had marked him, and that it could certainly come back for revenge any day now because the monster left very badly wounded. The fact of the matter was that after a few days, when the caretaker had gone through this, 
a police car began to pass by the farm, and they were driving slowly and seemed to be looking for clues, and perhaps they wanted to find out who had injured that man who had appeared all broken up and seriously injured near the farm. After a few days, the police soon stopped passing by the farm. But I also learned that the man they found wounded in the woods didn't die, and for the caretaker, this man was the one who had turned into a werewolf, who had burst into the farm with his dogs, and after the caretaker told me his whole story, I was a little apprehensive at the time, because the way this man told me his story, it really seemed like it was all true. And all of this came as a surprise to me, because I'd never had a conversation like this from someone who'd had a face-to-face experience with a werewolf. But it ended up being almost a month after that conversation with the caretaker, and I had forgotten all about the werewolf. But one day, when I was working normally on the farm, two men appeared at the gate of the property, and these two guys, who were around 40 years old, and they were looking for work on the farms in the region, so they said. The caretaker then talked to these guys, and said that at the moment the property wasn't in need of any new workers. But the farm dogs came to the gate, and started barking at these two guys. I found this strange, because the two Rottweilers were also afraid of these two men, and they barked very angrily, but the dogs kept their distance from the men, But soon after, these guys ended up leaving. The caretaker told me that he found it strange that these men were asking for jobs here on the farm because he had never seen any of them in the area and these suspicious men weren't rednecks. The caretaker became suspicious that these two men wanted something from the farm. But that day, I went out to the farm's pasture around 11 o'clock at night I was walking around the farm to cool off from the strong heat it was getting at that time, and suddenly, I heard a thick and frightening howl, and it was the sound of some kind of animal, and this howl was coming from far away. I stopped walking and looked through the woods around the property, because I'd never heard anything like that before, but I carried on walking around the farm, and then I saw another one of those howls, but the strange thing was that now, This sound was coming from the other side of the farm, and this sound seemed to be closer to the property. And then I saw the dogs barking near the barbed wire fence, and the way the dogs were nervous, it seemed that there was something there. At this point, I started looking away from the dogs to see if I saw anything. At that moment, I started to hear several howls around the farm, and it seemed that these sounds were coming from all sides. I became very afraid and terrified of these noises, which seemed to be from several dangerous animals, and at that moment, when they were looking in the dark woods near the fence, everything started to change for the worse. I saw a strange huge figure in the middle of the woods, near the dogs, and the strange thing was that the animal's eyes looked like two lights on, and... That image made me very frightened. I took a closer look and I was surprised because that figure looked like an animal with big pointy ears. But it was a good thing that this creature was outside the farm's fence, but it was afraid to go near the fence because of the farm's dogs, which were very large. I immediately thought that it was the same animal that the caretaker had faced the other day. But even so, The other howls didn't stop around the farm, and the sounds came from all sides, and it seemed that there were several of these creatures close to us. Of course, I was frightened by all those noises, I felt I was in danger, so I didn't think twice, and ran to the caretaker's house, which was just inside the property, as I knew he had a shotgun. Arriving at the foreman's house, it was a good thing he was already awake, and he had realized that the werewolf had returned to take revenge for the beating he had received the other day. With that, the caretaker said that he would take his family to leave the farm, and at that moment, his wife and son got into the car, and so did I, to get us out of that place.
As we were all already in the car, the caretaker started the car in a great hurry and began to maneuver the car to get away from those creatures, and it was at that moment that I saw two figures coming towards the car we were in, and they were two hairy beasts, and one of them was standing like a man, and the other was on four legs like a dog, and it was a good thing that the caretaker managed to maneuver the car. And we started to drive away through the farm's pasture, I looked out of the car window, and I saw by the light of the lantern those two creatures standing up, and I was frightened by the appearance of those beasts, because they looked a lot like a dog, and their ears were big and pointed, and the eyes of those creatures reflected a kind of lit light, which was something frightening, and the body of those beings, although they were standing up like a man, the body of those werewolves was hairy. Then I realized that the caretaker's story was all true, and just as the caretaker was leaving the farm, another one of the creatures appeared on the way, in front of the car, and the caretaker threw the car at the werewolf to run it over, but the creature managed to dodge in time and escaped. And as soon as the car passed this werewolf, and the caretaker kept accelerating the car on the property's path, he ended up destroying and tearing down the wooden gate at the entrance to the farm, and with that, we arrived at the dirt road, and so we were already relieved. So, the caretaker continued driving the car along the roads, and from my thoughts, I was shocked to learn that there were werewolves, and also, the foreman said that he had no doubt that those three beasts were werewolves, and thinking about it, those werewolves had created a revenge plan to attack the property, because, while one of them lured the dogs near the fence, the other two beasts entered from the other side to take us by surprise, and it was certainly to kill us. After this event, the caretaker took me to my house, which was in a nearby neighborhood, and I spent the rest of the night inside my house, and the foreman drove his family to the house of one of his relatives who lived in the city. Even though I went through all that terror on the farm, with the pack of werewolves, I still managed to get some sleep. When morning came, I went back to my work to ask for the accounts, because I didn't want to go through that risk again of bumping into those werewolves. And when I arrived at the farm, I was surprised, because there were two policemen there investigating what had happened, and my boss was worried and had no idea what had happened, but I also saw the two dogs from the farm that had been killed and torn to pieces by the werewolves, and this confirmed for me that those creatures had come to take revenge. And the fact is, I didn't hide anything, I told everything I knew to the police, who entered the three werewolves farm, and the caretaker and I managed to escape by great luck. The police were confused by this frightening tale, but from the clues they found on the property, the closest logic to this tragedy is that it was an attack with several dangerous animals in order to kill two large Rottweiler dogs. What's more, the caretaker also told the police the same story. In short, the caretaker and I only went to the police station once to answer the case, and then the deputy set a new date for the caretaker and I to return to the police station to give more evidence, as the police were still investigating the case. A few days later, the police called me and told me that I didn't need to go back to the police station anymore, and the police didn't say anything about the creatures I had reported. And to me... It seemed that the police wanted to hush up the case so that this information wouldn't reach the media because there were no reports on television or radio about what had happened inside the farm. A few days later, something terrible happened in our neighborhood because I heard on a news report that three young men had been shot dead inside a house and what struck me most about this story was that these men had come from another city to work on a construction site in my town and they had no police record. But I found this story strange because one of the victims had already been found wounded in the woods a few weeks ago. I became suspicious of this story, so I went to talk to my friend, 
the caretaker, and he confirmed that one of the dead men was the same guy who was found in the bush the other time, and the other two who died were the two men who asked the caretaker for a job, but they were cousins and brothers from the same family. Well, the caretaker and I asked for the accounts of this farm, and to this day I keep thinking about this case, I can't come to any logical conclusion, and for me, what may have happened is that the caretaker together with the dogs beat up a werewolf, and then, or it could have been a family of werewolves who came back to take revenge, because the creature almost died on the farm, or it could have been something else that the caretaker did and didn't tell us about, because a whole pack of werewolves came after him. Anyway, over time I discovered that the caretaker disappeared to another town, because I never saw that man again, and this story has remained a secret with me until today, because I was very frightened by all the terrifying events, and as time went by, I began to suspect that those two men who came to ask the caretaker for a job on the farm might also have something to do with the werewolves who tried to catch us on the farm. But one thing I do know is that these werewolves do exist, and be careful, because sometimes they can even get together, like in twos or threes, to take revenge on someone. And that was my real life horror story, which I went through with a pack of werewolves who tried to tear me apart. Well guys, if you liked the story, give it a like and subscribe to the channel, until the next video. Fear Zone Channel, your horror channel. Now then, let's go to today's werewolf story. Well, my name is Vanderlei, and this story happened to me in the year of 2002, when I was 35 years old and was in the city of Alfinas, which is in the interior of the state of Minas Gerais in Brazil. Well, I will relate a horror experience that I went through when I chased a macabre creature that had been terrorizing my neighborhood. And it all starts like this. At that time, I lived in the rural area of my city, and in front of my house, there was a dirt road, and you who have lived or live in this kind of region know that at night, these places of woods and roads are very dark. But one day, one of my neighbors, who was a Protestant Christian, told me a horror story about what had happened to him two days ago. This man told me that he was driving back from Monte. The mount is a place, like a small mountain, where traditionally, Protestant Christians gather to pray at night. Anyway, as he was driving back with his family, and it was late at night, when he got to the dirt road in our neighborhood, he saw a very strange creature standing in the middle of the road, and this beast was staring at him, and the strange thing is that the Protestant, he couldn't identify what kind of beast it was, but this beast was preventing him from continuing with his car on the road. Well, the protester, he put the headlight very high in the face of this strange animal and honked, and at that moment, that creature that was in the middle of the road got very angry, and suddenly it got up, and stood up like a man, balancing on two legs. With this fright, the protester backed the car up and started to walk with the car backwards, but the creature got up and stood on four legs and ran up to the car, and with the fright of seeing that creature do all this, the protester quickly threw the car to run over that creature with car, but the creature managed to escape being run over, and my friend ended up leaving that place, and he ended up admitting that that animal for sure was a werewolf. He told me that this standing creature looked a lot like a man, but it was all hairy, and the color of this animal was very dark, and it had very yellowish eyes that seemed to have lights coming out of them. Well, I was suspicious about this story, but as the Protestant's wife also confirmed the report, I was a little balanced in believing this macabre story, but for sure also, this Protestant couple that besides being very good friends of mine, for sure, they told me this story, because they knew that I liked to hunt animals in the woods, and I could find this werewolf in the woods and be attacked, I was worried about this report, but I continued my normal life. 
A few weeks later, this Protestant couple talked to me again, and they said that the werewolf had appeared again in the area because another Protestant family was terrified by a scary creature that came into their small farm. The woman from this farm looked out the window and saw her dogs barking at a creature all black that looked like half monkey and half man, and that monster took a small pig with his hands or claw, as if it were a person, and he bit the small pig to pieces. The fact is that these Protestant families don't have firearms in the house and thus have no way of confronting a werewolf, and because of this, the family became afraid of the creature and didn't have the courage to go outside the house to confront this beast. With this other story, I don't know if I believed for good that there were werewolves around the region or not, as I was in doubt. Anyway, I took my rifle and my machete, and started to do some rounds along the roads in the region, and I walked the streets for a few days and saw no sign of any creature. But it happens that one night I was at home, and suddenly I started to hear many barking dogs. At this time, I decided to go to the top floor of my house, which was a two-story house, to see the whole area from outside the house, and when I got to the top of my residence, I looked down, and saw a creature hiding behind a wooden fence outside my neighbor's house, and taking a good look at this animal, I realized that it was not a dog, but more like a deformed monkey, I was in doubt if it was. The same animal that the protesting couple found on the road, and that I was looking, I realized and saw that this creature was very large, and seemed to be dangerous as well. But to make matters worse, I saw that this creature was going to enter the backyard of this house that he was prowling, and seeing the danger, I went to get my shotgun, and when I went back to the top of my house, I saw that animal, and he was already inside the backyard of this house, but to my amazement, that animal was really a werewolf, because he was standing like a man, and trying to push the window to open it. At that moment, I started to load the gun in desperation, and pointed the rifle, at the werewolf and only did not shoot because I could miss the shot and catch in some person inside the neighbor's house. But this creature of the night saw me and was frightened and cleverly this animal went to the back of this house but I saw that his eyes had a light on them and were glowing which made this werewolf even more frightening. However, as I couldn't find this beast anymore in the backyard of this residence, I fired two shots upwards, at which point this animal came running into a vacant lot and ran away into a thicket, and it seemed to be frightened by the shots I fired upwards. After that, I quickly locked all the doors and windows of my house, because I was afraid of the werewolf, and I kept thinking about this monster. I started to reason and think, that since that creature walked upright like a man and seemed to be half animal and half human, it could only be a werewolf. I got smart that night because I thought that this beast could come back and attack my house to take revenge on me. But the next day I was thinking, because how could there really be a creature like that that I only heard about in stories and movies, but I ended up seeing and knowing that these beings really exist and the danger, too, of this creature returning to attack my region and end up killing someone, and what I knew of the stories of these creatures is that it was some person who turned this werewolf. But the curious thing is that during the day, I went to my neighbor's house, where this creature appeared, I went there, to see if I could find some kind of clue of the werewolf, and seeing that there was nothing, I decided to walk on a trail where the werewolf fled. The fact is, until I got close to some trees that had many claw scratches from some kind of animal, then I thought, if it was that werewolf that made these claw marks on this tree, he must have passed through here a few times, and surely it would be a special route for this creature. I don't know if those scratches on the tree were a clue or not, I just know that I was still traumatized by the werewolf apparition, and I ended up leaving that thicket, but even so... I still went back to that place a few times during the day to see if I could find anything new there, 
But of course, when I went into those thickets, I took my rifle with me. A few days later, I went into those woods again, and when I got close to the tree that would have been scratched by the werewolf, I saw a guy there, hanging around near that tree. I recognized this man, because he was a sighted member of a church that was near my house. I saw that this guy was scared to see me, but I asked this Protestant if he came to pray here in Mata. He said yes, that he has to do this around here, because he also said that he was seeing this place to bring people from his church here in the evening to pray. This guy was still scared of me, maybe because of my gun, but I told him to watch out for a strange creature that was walking around near this area, and that he better not bring anyone up here on the hill at night, and after I told him that, I ended up leaving. As the months went by, I ended up putting aside the story of the werewolf, but I started to avoid going out at night, to avoid the risk of encountering this creature again in this region. But it happened that one day I was passing in front of the church and saw that man I found in the bushes when I was looking for the werewolf, and I saw him, and I became curious about the life of this guy and asked one of the members of the church, who was that man, I learned that this guy, I learned that this guy came from another city a few months ago, and also, he was the only Protestant in this church, who did not like to go with the other Protestants in the hills to pray at night, I found this strange, because when I talked to this guy that day in the woods, he said he liked to go to the hills to pray. Well, this was very strange, but I was already a little suspicious about this guy, and for sure, he was one of the suspects that I had that turned this creature. On the other days, I started to follow this suspicious protester. I stayed in Tokaya near his house where he lived, and one day, when it was about 9 o'clock at night, I saw this guy leaving his house, so I followed him, and after a while, he went into that same forest where there were those trees scratched by the werewolf. Of course, I didn't go inside this place and just watched, and as I didn't want to run the risk of finding the werewolf, I went back to my house. I kept thinking, in the morning I will pass near this suspect's house to see how he would appear there, and when it started to dawn, I kept waiting for this guy to arrive, but it didn't take long, and suddenly I saw this man arriving at his residence. And the strangest thing is that this guy was wearing different clothes than the one he left last night at the time he entered that bush. But when he arrived at his house, and soon after I passed by looking inside his residence, and at that moment this protester saw me through his window, and he was looking a little scared at me, and he, I think he realized that I was chasing him and that I suspected something of him. But after this whole story, I decided to attend the same church, where this guy that I suspected of being a werewolf congregated, another day the suspect saw me there inside the church, and he came to talk to me, and this man that I was following, we started talking, and he invited me to go together on the mountain to pray in the late hours of the night. I told him yes, and that I would accept only if I took my rifle. To home appeared some strange creature, then we set the day, after the service ended, I went back to my house. I went to his house, but mysteriously, I learned from his neighbors that the Protestant suspect left for another city, and they said that this guy was strange, because he always went to the mountains at dawn to pray, and came back only in the morning. I was curious, and ended up entering the house of this suspect, there were two rooms, but there was no more furniture in there, the house was empty, and with that, I checked some papers, which was scattered in the house, I saw a catalog of dates of the year, which had some dates of the week scribbled with an X, I ended up taking the catalog, which was about the cycles of the moon, and left this house, I returned to my residence, and wondered if this guy was the same beast that had appeared in the region, and also I was still confused, because this werewolf could be someone else. But, a few days went by, and I didn't hear any more reports of this creature in my region. 
but I still look in these woods where I live, and I keep thinking about this werewolf, and because of that experience that I had with this beast, I keep to myself and take care at night, because I don't want to run the risk of seeing a werewolf or others out there. Anyway, I tried to find out about the suspect, but the people from the church said that they have not seen the suspect since and the Protestant Christians did not even know where he went to live. And that was my werewolf story. Well, if you like the story, give a like and subscribe to the channel until the next video.